Let's talk about dependence, addiction, and self-administration of drugs. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about some theories that'll, that will address why people take drugs, why they smoke, why they drink, uh, etc. Now, uh, the theories that we'll discuss in this chapter certainly are not the only theories that are out there. Uh, a lot of these theories don't necessarily address uh, the initiation of drug taking uh, behaviors, but rather what uh, sustains or keeps those behaviors going. And the models that are discussed in the textbook that's used for this course also doesn't address uh, peer pressure, experimentation, curiosity, uh, self-medication. Those things aren't really addressed here. Uh, so we'll just address the theories that are uh, in our textbook. Okay, so like I said, we'll talk about uh, why some of the explanations for why people drink, smoke, take drugs. Okay, so first let's talk about uh, drug abuse and two of the defining characteristics of drug abuse. The first is that drug abuse is distinctly different from what we consider normal behavior. Now, I am careful to put normal in quotation marks, so we should uh, say that drug abuse is different from what we consider quote-unquote normal behavior, because what's normal to one individual may not be normal to another. But on the whole, drug abuse is, is different from what we consider normal behavior. Okay, um, and so some of those things will address, you know, going to great lengths to get a drug, to self-administer a drug, the ways that they might go about procuring the drug in terms of maybe stealing or, you know, selling their bodies and, and other things. Okay, the second uh, defining characteristic of drug abuse is that uh, the development of drug abuse is different from individual to individual. So in other words, not everyone will have the same uh, path to becoming a drug user, drug abuser, okay? You could have two individuals that uh, perhaps try drugs for the first time in a college setting. One individual could, um, you know, try the drug, not touch it again, the other individual could uh, go on to become a drug abuser, okay? And that individual who decided not to, to touch it again may some point later in life, uh, you know, try the drug again and become a user. But there's no fixed recipe or pattern. Um, I shouldn't say pattern, but no fixed recipe for coming, for becoming, excuse me, a drug abuser, okay? It differs from individual to individual. So drug abuse is different from what we consider quote unquote, normal behavior. And then that the, the second thing is the development of drug abuse differs from individual to individual. Okay. So in this chapter, the models that we're going to talk about in terms of drug abuse and drug addiction are the disease model, physical dependence model, psychological dependence model and the positive reinforcement model. So don't worry about, uh, you know, jotting down anything right now because these will each appear on their own slides. Okay. So first of all, we have the disease model. Okay. And so what we'll do with each of these models is that we'll first talk a little bit about the major tenet or the major belief of the model, and then we'll talk about any strengths or weaknesses associated with the model. One of the things that you'll notice on the slide, uh, you know, sometimes there will be uh, a model that only has one strength or only has, excuse me, one weakness. And so, uh, you know, I'll make it uh, clear, uh, you know, in my discussion that okay, this is the only strength or this is the only weakness, um, just so that you are reassured that you haven't missed anything. So in terms of the disease model, the major tenet or the major belief of this model is that drug abuse is a disease. It's something that is beyond the control of the individual, okay? 
So drug abuse is something that is beyond the control of the individual. Okay. So, uh, you know, if you, um, you know, if you buy into that, that is something that's beyond the control of the individual, the strength or one of the strengths associated with this model is that, okay, it offers an explanation for individual differences, why some individuals are drug abusers and some aren't, okay? Because if it's a disease, just like any other disease, some individuals have the disease, some individuals don't, okay? So one of the strengths associated with, with this model is that it can account for individual differences and that actually is the only strength that's associated with this model okay and then there's one weakness uh, associated with this model and that weakness is that the nature of the disease has never been identified if drug abuse is caused by a disease what is the what is the source of the disease okay what causes the disease okay so you can't say that the drug causes the disease because we're talking about drug abuse itself being a disease okay so the nature of the disease has never been identified when we talk about other types of diseases okay in almost all of those cases we can at least identify a source for example diabetes caused by poor regulation of insulin and blood you know insulin and so forth or uh, cardiovascular disease, okay? We can point to, uh, you know, clogged arteries, poor diet, uh, things like that. And so here, the major weakness is that the nature of the disease has never been identified, okay? Then we have the physical dependence model. Sorry, I keep getting a tickle in my nose and I'm getting a little congested, so I apologize for that. <clears throat> the physical dependence model, the major belief of this model. Uh, so let's, let me, I'm, I'm sorry, let's go back for just a second. Um, and so we're going to just make sure that we recall the definition of physical dependence. Remember, physical dependence is where if an individual stops taking a drug or reduces the dose, then you'll get the appearance of physical uh, withdrawal symptoms, okay? So the major tenet or belief of this model is that people continue taking drugs to avoid withdrawal, okay? So we're saying that the withdrawal symptoms are unbearable and so people continue um, taking the drug. And I've actually almost gone into one of my strengths, sorry, with that. So one of the strengths of this model is that uh, this model can be applied to any drug that has physical withdrawal symptoms associated with it okay so you know it's not limited to a single drug but this model could be used to explain the abuse of any drug that has physical withdrawal symptoms associated with it okay now uh, another strength of this model is that it offers an explanation for why people work so hard to get drugs okay so if the withdrawal symptoms are just awful and an individual is uh, trying to avoid those withdrawal symptoms then that explains why they work so hard that they'll go to great lengths to procure a drug and to self-administer the drug okay uh, so again the strengths are that the model can be associated with any drug that has uh, physical withdrawal symptoms associated with it, and that this model offers a good explanation for why people will work so hard to obtain drugs, okay? Now, weaknesses associated with this model is that, you know, we're kind of picking on the model, but it offers no explanation for why people continue taking drugs that only have psychological uh withdrawal symptoms associated with it. And so I say we're kind of picking on the model because the model never claims to do that, but still we criticize it because it does not. Okay, one of the um, other weaknesses associated with this model is that it does not offer an explanation for why some people are able to discontinue using drugs and others aren't. So if the withdrawal symptoms are so unbearable, and this is the motivation for continuing to take the drugs, then either everybody continues taking them or everybody, 
everyone would be able to stop if the withdrawal symptoms weren't so bad. And so this model does not offer an explanation for why some individuals are able to stop taking a drug, but others are not. Okay. Uh, our next model is the psychological dependence model. Okay. So if you recall the definition for psychological dependence, okay, this is where uh, discontinuation of, of a drug or reduced dosage uh, would result in the appearance of psychological withdrawal symptoms, okay? And so remember, those are more subjective in nature, those withdrawal symptoms. Excuse me. So the major belief of this model is that people continue taking drugs because they believe that they can't function without them. They think that their brains won't, won't work right without taking the drugs, okay? So people continue taking the drugs because they believe that they can't function without them, okay? And that's actually the only strength that we're gonna talk about associated with uh, this model. And then there's one weakness, one weakness associated with this model that we'll talk about. And that is the fact that the argument or the explanation is circular, okay? Meaning that, uh, you know, we still don't have a good explanation. We're saying that people take these drugs because they believe they can't function without them. And because they can't function, they believe they can't function without them, they keep taking them. And so you see that argument just goes round and round. It just folds back on itself. Okay. Our last model is the positive reinforcement model. Okay. Now we addressed uh, the the concept of a positive reinforcer back in chapter two. But remember, a positive reinforcer uh, is anything that increases the um, level of responding. Okay. So a positive reinforcer is anything that increases the behavior that it's dependent on. Okay, so in this case, the major belief is that people continue taking drugs because the drugs act as positive reinforcers. Okay, people continue taking drugs because the drugs act as positive reinforcers. Okay, and because of that positive reinforcement, they continue taking the drug. Okay, so the one of the strengths associated with this model is that, well, it offers a good explanation for um, why people uh, take drugs that are not associated with uh, physical, you know, physical withdrawal symptoms or the psychological withdrawal symptoms. So it, it addresses both of those because it's simply saying that, you know, and if we think about the physical dependence model as well. So it's saying that I'm not taking a drug because I have a disease or because I'm afraid of the withdrawal symptoms, you know, be they uh, psychological or physical, I simply take the drug because I like the way it makes me feel, okay? And so that's the strength um, of the model. So it offers an explanation uh, for why people are using the drugs uh, or continue using drugs that don't seem to have, uh, you know, a great deal of those physical withdrawal symptoms, psychological symptoms um, associated with them, okay? And then a weakness of this model, similar to the psychological dependence model, is that the argument is circular because essentially what we're saying is people take drugs because it makes them feel good, and because those drugs make them feel good, they continue taking them. And so again, we have a circular argument, okay? So just be sure to uh, read over the sections of your text um, to sure up your understanding of these uh, four models here.